Hi, I'm Elise Dewsbury from New Musicals, Inc., the producers of the web series So Proudly We Hailed, and I'm here with Elaine Little, who is the subject of our episode, The Interrogator. Elaine, could we start, could you tell us just a little bit about your, your, the, the history of your service as a veteran? Well, uh, I um, started out in the 80s, and I, I was a Morse code interceptor, and um, then after, and which is useless, <laughs> but... <laughs> But um, then I transitioned into Russian linguist, and also I d- picked up motion picture specialist because I was a film major in college, and that's what they called it back then. It didn't even have the word video in it. <laughs> and um, then I got into the reserves, and I became a broadcast journalist. And I also, um, and then eventually I got into the guard. And I became an, um, a human intelligence specialist, which is what they call interrogator now, kind of a euphemism. I see. Okay. Well, and tell me, how did you hear about this project, So Proudly We Hailed, and what made you decide you wanted to apply for it? Well, I heard about it on Facebook, I think, because I belong to a lot of those veterans arts groups. So I'm sure it was something that was shared from them, but I'm not sure which one. And I was looking for projects. I had just moved to California in April of 2020. And I was looking for any kind of writing opportunity. And specifically, I was targeting veteran ones because I figured I had a better chance. Right, right. And of course, you are a writer yourself. I I was reading your bio earlier and uh, you won first place at the 2019 National Veterans Creative Arts Festival, uh, semi-finalist in the Cinestory TV pilot retreat workshop. Your work has appeared in different literary magazines. You have an essay about your experiences during your deployment to Afghanistan that got published in the literary anthology uh, Powder, Writing by Women in the Ranks from Vietnam to Iraq. So with all of that writing experience under your belt, can you talk a little bit about what it was like to be working with Joshua Cohen, who wrote the lyrics and the music, to take your story and turn it into a musical? How was that a different writing experience for you? Um, Because I usually don't collaborate. So that was different. And it has kind of opened me up to the possibilities of collaboration in the future. It's not, I mean, I wouldn't want to only collaborate, but I just, I feel like it makes you so much more versatile if you're working on your own projects and you're also, um, you know, collaborating with people. And, it, you know, it, it multiplies your chances of, maximizes your chances of success. And so I'm kind of looking at it from that angle. And on the personal level, I mean, Joshua Cohen was a delight to work with. He was so friendly. He was, you know, he just is so, you know, musically talented and, accepting and open. And so he was just a really great example to me of what a collaborator could be. Great. And and how did it, did it change your, um, uh, how you felt about, not how you felt about the story, but do you felt, feel that it brought something different to the story to have the music and the lyrics become a part of it? How did, how did that feel? It you know, just gave it another dimension and it, it made it available to people that maybe that was the way they want to take in their, you know, artistic, you know, experience. They like music. And so it, um, it, it seemed like it just opened it up to a new, a whole new swath of people other than just people that read very obscure literary magazines with a circulation of maybe 250. So, you know, it, it just, it, it expands your range. That's what I think. Great, great. Now, you alluded to this a moment ago, but I I had also read in your bio that during the pandemic, you quit your job, drove out to L.A. with your two cats that you mentioned, and started your current job as Veterans Outreach Coordinator with the Los Angeles uh, 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 Veterans Administration. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you talk a little bit about that job and and what it's like for you to work with veterans? Yeah. um, Well, yeah, just briefly, in, in late 2019, I went through, I, I just tried to get another job in the VA and I specifically targeted Los Angeles because that's where I wanted to go. And I found out that everything worked out in early um, January of, of t- 2020. And they gave me 90 days to get out here. And in the 90 days. You know, <laughs> wow. So it was great. Yeah. And so you, um, you drove out here and got locked down immediately. Right. And I sold my house in like late February, right before the cutoff. So it was quite a thing. 
And I actually transitioned to the, the homeless veterans outreach coordinator in July because before I was doing a different VA job, but I was transitioning. And it's um, it was kind of unusual doing it from home because homeless veterans outreach is something that usually involves being one-on-one -on -one with people, but you couldn't. So since we've opened up uh, late March, I have been going into the office. We have been doing some limited um, outreach um, events. And when we do outreach events, we don't just, you know, it's of course, homeless people may show up, homeless veterans may show up, but also, you know, just veterans show up. And um, we just try to work with um, the Los Angeles Housing Authority. We've gone down to the Grand Hotel where they, you know, they have um, several veterans there. And we just try to come in and, you know, let them know that, you know, we're available because if you're a homeless veteran, you definitely have more options than just a, a homeless person. And a lot of them don't know that because, um, you know, veterans benefits weren't pushed that much. I'd say maybe up until about 10 years ago. I mean, I knew almost nothing about veterans benefits until 10 years ago. And I'm, you know, relatively well informed, but... <laughs> You know, I had I had just heard stuff like, you know, oh, you can't get them and it's so difficult, but it's it really is accessible. It's just that there is a lot of red tape. But if there is a veteran that needs help, I mean, there are, you know, steps we can take immediately to get them to at least a phone number where they can talk to somebody. And a lot of a lot of um, housing um, opportunities are, you know, worked through the VA where they can, you know, house them and then move them and get them a voucher maybe to get low cost housing or try to get them into something permanent. That's great. And, and just in case there are some veterans who wind up watching this, who have those questions, are there some specific places you can suggest to them websites to go to or organizations to check out to find out more about those benefits? Yeah, I'll send you a link. Okay. Okay. Super. I'll make sure that we that I right, uh, and then post that the link because it, 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 there it, as part of the uh, um, all in one place. Yeah, interview. Super, super. Yeah, and speaking of that, is is there is there anything else that uh, that you would like to say, uh, you know, to to veterans in particular about about getting their stories out there, about looking for uh, groups to connect with, about what they can do to help themselves uh, as they move forward. Um, there are a lot of groups like Warrior Writers, and there's Word Commandos, which is um, a group that it's it has um, I think it's out of um, Antioch College, and they um, have like a group that does um, prose and essays, and you know sometimes even workshops pieces. And there's songwriting opportunities. I don't know the exact what it's called, but I've, I've seen something online about veterans and songwriting and they do a songwriting workshop. I've seen free guitar lessons. What I did starting about, oh, maybe six years ago, I would just Google veterans um, writing. Mm. And I would just, and that's how I found the, like the Writers Guild thing where they have the, um, you um, work on screenplays and, and teleplays. It's like the Writers Guild Veterans Writing Workshop. And I found out about that and got into that in 2015. And I found out about um, uh, the Longleaf Writers Conference where they have the Celia Baker um, Veteran Scholar. And I got that in 2018. That's in Seaside, Florida. And that's like a week long um, writer, writers conference that I highly recommend because it's not like some of these other writers conferences I've been to where you're just sort of in this huge crowd, it was very intimate and very individualistic. And uh, there's lots of opportunities out there. And some of them, I don't think that many veterans apply because some of them, I don't feel like they're as well publicized as they could be. And so you'll find something, you know, on this Google page, you know, number five of the Google pages. And you know, you'll know, be like, I wonder if this is still good. And you'll find out it is and apply. And sometimes there's just not enough attention on these things. And because there's not like one database where you can go and find them all. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Elaine, since you are already a writer and are and want to keep writing, it makes sense that you would look for writing opportunities. But, uh, I, but I wonder, would you agree, one of our other veterans, uh, Ryan Conklin, was not a writer, but he found that writing about his his experiences 
uh, when he was deployed was very useful to him in, in learning how to integrate them into his life and how to be able right. to deal with what had happened to him. So, so would you, would you also uh, encourage people, even if they don't consider themselves a writer, that these are still really good opportunities for veterans? Yes. So yes. I, I really, I really do be, because um, I, I think that, you know, I, there's a lot of, you know, initially when the work, the workshops I got into, there was a lot of emphasis on just writing just for release, you know, not like I want to publish something, but just, I want to talk about things and maybe it's more, it's easier easier for me just to write than to be talking. You know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, I can think about things more. And so like warrior writers is very much like that where it was just a good release and, and they didn't emphasize that. And the, the only reason, you know, I went looking for other stuff was because I wanted to publish, I wanted to do fiction, that kind of thing. And so that's, that's sort of how I, I just kind of pivoted, you know, I was like, okay, well, I, I like the therapy stuff. And that's enough for a lot of people. That's great. And I wanted, I just wanted to, to get this stuff out there. Cause I wrote, you know, I've been writing since college. So it wasn't just, you know, I, I was in the military and I started writing, you know, it was before that. So it's, um, there, I mean, they'll take you, those, these groups will take you where you're at. You know, so it, it don't, no one should worry about, well, I'm not good enough. I'm, it's just, no, you know, it, it's just everything improves over time. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, the thing is, the thing that holds most people back is just the full time job, mm -hmm. you know, the family. I mean, not the family's great, but, you know, sometimes, you know, that's, you have to, you know, make time for things. And I think actually having a family enhances me creatively, you know, or did. <laughs> I still have a family, but, um, you know, even as a mom, I was, I felt creative, you know, and I, I felt it helped. And so it's, if you can find one of these groups, uh, you'll find it, it will enrich your life. You'll meet people, um, and you will make relationships that, you know, can last a lifetime. That's so true. That's so true. Thanks for that. Um, Elaine, and you know, there's an aspect of your episode in our web series, The Interrogator, that that um, that starts to talk about uh, uh, what it was like being a woman in your position, and 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 in this particular episode, that was sort of brought out because of the fact that you were interrogating a woman, and so you were seeing the parallels uh, about um, some of the, uh, uh, the the different how different it is to be a woman in these environments. Can you talk a little bit about that from your point of view in your service? Um, yeah, you know, I, because a lot of the emphasis I see, um, on, you know, being a woman in the military is kind of the MST angle and military sexual trauma. And I'm like, that's a huge part of it. And there are also men that have experienced military sexual trauma. Um, and that's, you know, something you don't hear much about because men don't like to talk about that. And, but, you know, I, I really thought the military was useful in a lot of ways for me, as far as I tend to be an introvert and I don't like to, you know, I get nervous and I, you know, I don't want to talk and I'm shy and, uh, you know, all these excuses I made, but, you know, it, it really is a part of me. And, but, and so I, I felt like things did improve for me, for me in that angle, because it was like, if you're not, if you don't say anything, you're just going to get run over, you know? And so sometimes, you know, this, it would force me to be more assertive than I really felt inside. So that's good, you know, and, um, the, and there also are a lot of benefits that I'm getting from the military now. And I'm grateful for that, you know, like, you know, I get TRICARE and, you know, that kind of thing. That's great. You know, I can go to the VA anytime I want and uh, they'll take care of me, you know, so that's great. And I don't know if I would have had that option if I had been in the military. I mean, you know, healthcare, you know, that's another subject. You know? yes. But um, but I did feel like um, for the most of my time in the military, uh, my my um, my personality, you know, just the fact that I was shy and retiring did not work in my favor, mm. and uh, that it that I didn't feel like really respected. And I didn't feel like I was contributing or that my contrib contributions were valued. And that was just the way it was, you know, I mean, yeah. and I can't say that it's all their fault because I do tend to be kind of the shy retiring type introvert. So that's the way you are perceived. 
many times when you're like that. If you don't stand up for yourself, there's not always some hero that's coming to come in and help and stand up for you. So you got to do it. So true. Thank you, Elaine. Well, I want to I want to thank you so much for being willing to share your story with us uh, to, to help create the episode, The Interrogator, and also for your for sharing with us right now uh, some of your thoughts about the benefits that are possible out there and the organizations that can help people tell their stories and find benefits and all of the other things that that are available out there to veterans. And mm-hmm. I'm really glad that you're helping us spread spread the word and make sure that people uh, are aware of all those things. So thank, well, thank you so you. much. It's been a pleasure talking to you and I will send you that link. Thank you. Super. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. Okay. Okay.